Over the course of 27 years and across 9 regions, Pokemon trainers have collected 68 unique and memorable gym badges. But not all of them are created equal. I mean, after you finally triumph over tough trainers like Whitney and Clay, how would you feel if you were greeted by... Yeah, I'd be disappointed as well. But what objectively makes a good gym badge? Well, with a little digging, I think I found four factors that might contribute to it. One, recognizability. Does it visually convey the typing and or theming of the gym challenge? If your grass type badge isn't plant themed, try again, you failed. Two, does it work as an actual badge? Can this be imagined as a button, enamel pin, or official ID? You should be able to put it on without any sort of offset. Three, design uniqueness. Color combination, shape, and complexity of the badge are all considered. However, those do need to be kept in check because four, how does it look in a set? You can make the most complicated and detailed badge ever, but arrange it with the others already designed and it just sticks out like a sore thumb. But remember, we're redesigning badges, not making new ones. Everything still needs to fit. So with that out of the way, let's look into the worst and see if we can make them some of the best. Out of the 68 badges, I'd say that there are only 16 that need a major rework. Yeah, just go in. You'll see what I mean later. There's a lot of bases to cover and there's no better place to start than, that's right, new- Pokemon Black, White, and their sequels are tied in introducing the most badges in the series with 10 total. And I'd say that only two of them could use some retooling. One that's too simple and the other not clear in what it's trying to convey. When you look at the Legend Badge, what do you think it's supposed to be? Some people say that it's a Dragon Head similar to the Rising Badge. Okay, where is it? What's the orientation of the head? Is it really flat with a ton of spikes at the bottom or does it have hair on top with the eyes being comically low on the skull? Others say it's ambiguous but has motifs of the gym's puzzle which has a black and white long as the main centerpiece. Then why the gray? Is it a foot? Some lizards have weird feet, so I get it. Then why the red gem? Bulbapedia says it might be a mace. Nope. In any case, it looks like it's trying to be a lot of things, but does it poorly. Simpler badges doesn't automatically make worse designs. So let's get that dragon theme here, but keep the dichromatic color scheme, but with a pop of indigo as opposed to the red, because that's dragon's color. Clean up the shape to be more like the top head of a dragon, and that way everyone's happy. Whereas that was too vague, you immediately understand the wave badge. It's a layered teardrop looking like the waves along a beach. I just wish it had a better shape because the teardrop template is always the go-to with water badges. It's dull. And with the slim vertical dimensions of the Unovan badges, I think that a big wave with that same layered pattern would work there as well. And putting them all together, I'd say that they're still cohesive with the rest of the group, but with real personality for what they want to be. The same can't be said for Johto. Johto is weird. The badges are somehow leagues better than its predecessor while also still having these. I could talk for hours about how much I despise the mineral badge. The shiny new steel type, one of the best types in the entire series, relegated to having its first impression being just an unpainted stop sign. Jasmine, girl, I need you to stop and look at the signs. This is just terrible. However, we can save it. Just shift the octagon on its side and add glimmers to fill the empty space. It's been done before, so this works in theory, but if you want a more transformative answer, make the shape and design look more like an actual mineral, like Galena or Hematite. Same concept, but is now elevated. Now the case of the Hive Badge is downright hilarious to me. Let's think about it like this. For one, this is just a ladybug. The iconography works, no one on the planet doesn't know what a ladybug is. However, the color scheme doesn't really work for a traditional bug type badge as we know it today. For one, it doesn't adhere to color theming, like how poison is purple and electric is yellow. The bug type is instead represented by this puke green seen everywhere in the series. Secondly, circles are plain and dull, especially as badges or pins whose competition are these. And most funny of all, despite the fact that there are Pokemon based Based on bees, as well as ladybugs being introduced in the games you get this badge in, Bugsy, Mr. Bug Type Big Shot, doesn't use either. The hive badge fundamentally fails on all fronts. Just make it a puke green beehive. And for God's sake, use a letaba. You refuse to evolve your Kakuna, just do this at the very least. We arrive in Hoenn for a small detour because nearly all of them are excellent, except for the balance badge. A dumbbell to represent the normal type? Why? 
Norman's gym isn't really associated with weightlifting equipment. Honestly, I'd say if it looked more similar to the cobble badge from Sinnoh, no one would bat an eye. There's like two things that could represent this gym. This looks like one of them. Speaking of... I applaud the deviation from the hands motif that they were using prior. However, the cobble badge is just boring. I think if they wanted to keep with the theme of a training gym or dojo, why not just have it be a struck punching bag? Same general shape, but there's more going on. Or if you want to keep the name, instead of a punching bag, it could be a block that's broken in half. Either way, cobblestone isn't relevant to anything in this gym. And assuming that these are tatami mats like what Bulbapedia suggests, because they don't look like them at all, it just makes this badge very dissonant. Same can't be said for the Fen badge, to an extent. See, a Fen is comparable to a swamp or a marsh, which fits for the setting of Pastoria City being built in the lowlands and featuring the Great Marsh. Damn shame that the gym leader has nothing to do with that and instead is just a wrestler. However, there is a way to work with this. See, the color scheme of Crash Awake's mask matches with the badge, but considering that the badge itself is supposed to be a lake of water with what I suspect are reeds on the side, let's see if we can combine the two. Make the badge still look like the lake, but the scene just so happens to look like the leader's public persona. It'd also break out of the confinements of a circular crest, which is always a win in my book. You'll notice that I am not a fan of the circular badge. Would be a damn shame if there was some place in the Pokemon series where there was more than one circular badge. But luckily, there isn't a place that has that. Welcome back. This is why I added you here. All of them are circles. Not even just that, but all of them look the exact goddamn same. Gold trim, silver base, with the only change being the icon of the type used by the gym leader. And when I say icon, I mean that in the most literal sense. These are the exact same designs and colors used in the UI elements of Scarlet and Violet. Altogether, they look less like gym badges and more like Mario Kart cups. Even factoring in the other badges of the game, those don't really do well either. The Team Star badges at least have the confidence to scrawl their logo on these mass-produced penny-pressed dribble. There's at least something going on with those, which sucks because this batch of gym leaders has such defined personalities, jobs, hobbies, whatever it may be. Tulip is a model and beautician, Brassius is an eccentric artist, Katie is a baker, Crush is a snowboarder, and so on and so forth. Now obviously, it'd be a little difficult to make completely new badges because there's nothing to work with here. But if I were to create new crests, which isn't the name of the game by the way, maybe something like this? However, more feasibly, let's just pull a Team Star and add flourishes to the existing ones. Snow blasted on the Ice Badge, a Kiss imprint on the Psychic Badge, Rhyme's autograph on the Ghost Badge, etc. The only one that should be playing would be Larry's because he doesn't need to do anything more than what he already has to. But anything is better than these. And these aren't much better. For one, that's a circle right there. Oh, you all split apart. How quaint. I'll be honest, I am a sucker for combining little things into big things, and with a puzzle piece system, the sky is the limit for how they can be designed. Regardless, there is a right and wrong way to do it. Can you guess what they did? Yeah, they're not great. Some of them are definitely better than others. However, the water, fighting, and especially ice badges are all the... Not that. Let's go in order from least to most egregious. The fighting badge has a real nice flow to it. However, that nub doesn't really read as a fist all too well. Change the shape to something more like this, streamline it down to get that energy across, and BAM! The water badge I have to commend for straying away from that teardrop shape. However, I think that the ambiguous shape that I think is a whirlpool isn't defined enough, nor is it fitting of Nessa's whole deal. Maybe if it was more obviously a whirlpool, or even something like a life preserver, the idea would be more apparent. There is only so much you can do with this shape though. But if you were to ask me what the worst badge in the entire series is, I'd say that the Galarian Ice Badge is right up there alongside all of Paldea's and like most of Kalos. Trust me, there are some stinkers that we'll talk about in just a minute. I'll say that while ice type badges aren't the most visually diverse, I gotta hand it to them. An ice cube is definitely a bold choice. A good one? No but certainly bold. What's funny is that in Sir Chester, which across both versions is a snowed over winterscape complete with snowmen, they opt to make the Super Smash Brothers Minecraft logo. Make it a snowman. 
for the games that started it all, they did a pretty good job for the most part. There are a bunch of small things that I could choose to nitpick and change and some logistics that might make more sense when thinking about it a little too much. Like how the earth badge, the ground type badge is more reminiscent of the grass type with its color and design. Actually, let's talk about the earth badge. This is a weird one as cohesively, it does not match with the rest of its group. Having to be shown diagonally to fit the square dimensions of the Kanto set is a novel solution, but it's to a problem that you created. Also, by doing a better research, the Earth Badge is reminiscent of a Sakaki tree, which is Giovanni, the original ground type gym leader's name in Japanese. So this is less of a ground badge and more of a Giovanni badge. However, I think it can still be changed. What if we made it more square, like it's rooted into the ground, retain the tree, but have it bloom in a way that it fills the spaces to align with its contemporaries? Also, make it brown or like an earthy green. The other one that really grinds my gears in Kanto is the Soul Badge. I mean, I kinda get it, heart and soul, but I think that a fuchsia heart is not the best thing you'd wanna represent a ninja like Koga or Janine with. Do ninjas poison hearts? Probably. They also probably poison other things like blood or livers or whatever. I think what it'd be more fitting would be something like a smoke cloud. Same color and considering that they used the wheezing line on more than one occasion, I think it works pretty well. Now looking back, we've revisited 20 badges. Taking out Paldeo, that leaves us with 12 out of the 16 I initially laid out. And with one region left, how bad can this be? Ooh, this isn't good. Man, half of these badges are real bad, and the other half are just middling at best. Yeah, except for you, Cliff Badge, you get a pass. However, the Fairy, Psychic, Rumble, and Voltage badges are dog ass. One thing to note is that for their first foray into 3D, Pokemon really wanted to add more dimension to their badge designs that isn't just a simple extrusion. The Rumble badge doesn't do that. This thing is flat all the way throughout. I think they wanted to do a fun perspective thing with two fists rushing past each other like in a fighting game, but considering that's not the case, and especially since this has nothing to do with rollerblading, the gym's central gimmick, this is a huge missed opportunity. Make it a skidding skate. Add sparks if you're so inclined. But a paper thin badge is not it. The Voltage Badge is the messiest mess I have ever seen. No symmetry, awkward shapes, and a general lack of identity is very apparent. I like how they added layering to the original, but considering that the badge comes from an inventor who runs the equivalent of the Eiffel Tower, why not just make it a light bulb? You know, like when you have an idea, or even just referencing lights, which you have to power on to even challenge this gym in game. In the middle, the internals could be shaped like the Prism Tower, and hell, add those lightning strikes, but have it carve out the shape. What it currently has is no identity aside from the fact that yellow equals electric. And for these last two, they just decided to completely screw with every convention that made a badge awesome. They don't look like they fit with the rest of the group, they can't fit flush on a surface because of their use of orbs, and the fact that they don't convey their typing well at all. If I were to give this design to a non-Pokemon fan and then give them a list of types, I'd say that either Ghost or Poison would be one of their first guesses. Olympia is a fortune teller who has this whole astrological theme. Why not just make it a galaxy, have an orb in the center, and add some gold bits to represent stars or constellations. To take cues from the Voltage Badge, make everything layered. Have the gold bits stick out for added depth. And with that, that leaves the Fairy Badge. This is a train wreck and a half because it wants to do so many things and all it accomplishes is being the widest badge by a mile. I think it wants to look like stained glass, but I always saw it more as a representation of Valerie herself. So let's just go in that direction. Still have it ornate, but shape it like one of her kimono's sleeve wings. That way it slims it down, invokes the fairy type, but also could still work as a badge. And that's all the badges I think could be improved. There were a bunch of others that could warrant more discussion, but I'll just lightning round them here as they really require like one change. You need to brighten your colors. Add some curves to those angles. You stick out like a sore thumb. I can easily snap those twigs in half. Add something more to it. Why are the beams of life so low? Raise them up a tad. Switch places with the earth badge. A sea of monotone should be bookended by a rainbow. Thematically, that's awesome. You're too squished and brighten your design. I can't see you. Let me see you. There's more water than ice. Let's bring that back. I can snap off your mandibles. Add a backplate. Oh, and by the way, change your name. Change your name. Change your name. Change your name.